Good evening, everybody. How are you guys? Uh, my name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland, and this is part eight of my uh, Let's Learn Flutter Together series, um, in which I am building a very simple app called Expense for Two, and it does what it says. It helps manage uh, expenses between two parties, uh, two groups, or two people. It doesn't matter, just two persons, let's say. Uh, you buy something for them, they buy something for you, or one of uh, of you buy something for both of you. And uh, so far it's going to be a 50-50 split. Um, it's going to be uh, probably... Um, I'd, I will probably add some parameters to change that later on, but that's the, uh, the use case I have right now. Um, so, well, uh, refer to the... Previous parts, if you want to catch on, um, uh, catch, catch up, catch on, I don't know, <laughs> if you want to know what I, I, I did um, earlier. And and tonight I am going to go over the, the app once again, um, add some uh, permanent storage. Last time I added the SQ light, SQF light. Um, package um, and uh, I tested that it worked now I'm going to uh, do some uh, create uh, update delete uh, stuff like that and I also um, uh, do some general improvement to the app that uh, uh, it has come to a point where it needs that so let's go to the main scene and I have uh, changed something I'm no, no longer using the phone, the uh, physical device, I'm going to use the emulator uh, because uh, I had to take some screenshots just to align things properly and well it's kind of useful uh, so I'll stick with the uh, emulator for now uh, so you can see the, the color has changed, uh, color scheme has changed, I like to change stuff from one string to the other uh, and uh, well, the first thing I want to do, I want to, uh, well, uh, what? Oh, yes, it, it worked. I want to get rid of those buttons here. And I'm going to add a close uh, icon here and then a save button here instead of having them done there. So let's do that. Uh, let's see where where is that going to be uh, in the... Uh, expense form probably uh if you were if you have watched the the previous stream or the previous or, or, or the um, vod on youtube uh then you will notice that i have created some custom widgets here which makes my form a lot uh smaller which is great uh, but i'm going to add the new stuff in there so i probably uh, end up uh, creating more custom widgets uh, later on. So we are going to add here a leading icon. I believe that's what I need to do. And that is a widget. So this widget is going to be an icon button. Unless I am mistaken. So control space to import that. And it says that the name icon is required. So let's have that. It's an icon. And we're going to use the standard icons close. Do we have a close outline? Hmm. Maybe I'm going to use the close outline. And now it says that the unpressed is required. So let's add unpressed and see uh, what unpressed uh, takes. Uh, uh, it's a void function that doesn't take any argument great and what we want to do when we press this thing is we we want to go we want to call the navigator and we want to pop our state so that should do it let's see we now have the cross here and if we click that we go back to the main form that's great now we need to add a save button here and that is and actions, one of the actions, so we will only have one. Uh, actions is a list of widgets, uh, and what we want is a text button. So let's add a 
text button. And well, we're going to need an unpress uh, event handler. And then we're going to need a child. The child of this text button is a text. I wonder why it's not a string that you can put there, but that's okay. And that's going to be save. And I'm going to going to put that put it like that uh, because not so long not long from now I'm going to introduce uh, internationalization and so we're gonna have a regular text that we're going to um, transform to uppercase so that's the text and we need another parenthesis here and that should do it Except it doesn't. Oh, it probably does, but the text is maybe the wrong color. Uh, so what? Uh, it's the text that we need to style. And we need to add a comma here. And we need to style that probably. And that's a input style. No, it's a text style. Text style and our text style, we need a color and we're going to use the theme of context dot um dot what I always forget what I, what I want to use. Uh it's not the primary color, it's the it's the uh ah. Okay, it's the it's the um, color scheme. There we go. That's the color scheme, and so that's the primary. So we want the on primary. On primary. There we go. There's our button. It's there. Our save button. Now that save button doesn't do anything right just right now because well because because it doesn't have anything in the unpress button okay um so what should go there is what is currently here so let's copy that from the uh the button below and put that here all right, and form key here is the private variable that is defined over here. And so when we press that, we validate the form, and if the form is not valid, is valid, we show a thingy, and then we pop the the context. I actually don't don't know if that works. But that works. Uh, description should not be empty. So let's add an expense paid by me for milk. Uh, for oops, uh, keyboard is not properly defined for 1.50 euros, and that was for them. And that was yesterday, and the category is uh, refund because I don't have any category just yet. And then save, and it's there. And let's create another one just to be sure. Paid by them, and that's going to be uh, coffee for two francs for me. Uh, the date, uh, the date is seventh. I don't really care. Salary save, and now we have the second one. Okay, if we go back to the first one, then we also have me milk 150 euros. Yesterday a refund, and then we can sell and go there, and we've got them coffee. That still works. That's um, wonderful. We can now remove this call, and we can delete the buttons that that file that is no longer no longer used. Uh, except when we do that, we need to remove the import. Otherwise, we have an error. Okay. 
Okay, we have that. Um, what else? What else did I want to add in there? Uh, well, so far that's all. So now I need to make that persistent. Uh, right now, I don't. I don't think I had anything uh, just yet. I'm going to change those categories later. Uh, I'm, I'm currently using emojis, but that's uh, probably not a good idea. Um, because if I understand correctly, the emojis are um, device specific and I'm not sure I'm going to find the emojis on the iPhone or how they are, how they are going to look on the iPhone. So uh, I'm Maybe I'm going to drop the, the icon altogether. But right now, I want to save that in the SQLI database. Because if I do that, if I stop my app and then start my app again, I have lost my expenses, which we will uh, see very soon. Let's have a look at that. Come on, come on, let's bring the emulator back. And here's my app and I have lost my, my expenses. Okay, we do have some code in there and I'm actually going to have a look at my uh, container initialization. Uh, there we go. Uh, yes, so that that initializes a lazy singleton. Actually, I think I can do with regular singletons. So I'm going to do that. Uh, okay, and now. Uh, that's good. Uh, in the what did I? Oh, now uh, it's automatically done. Okay, so I'm going to initialize this, these singletons, and then in my expense form, uh, when I why did I get that? Uh, Oh, no, it's not in the form. It's on the home screen, of course. Uh, when the home screen uh, starts, I declare two variables. Uh, the expense provider, which is the class that is going to uh, go get the, the data from the database and uh, a list of expenses. And then we initialize the state. We call get expense on the provider, and that's an asynchronous function call so we need to change that with a then method which is going to be called whenever this returns this async uh, call finishes it's going to give us a value and this value is a list of uh, expenses and then uh, I'm going to set the state and that's a hack uh, that's a horrible hack that I need to remove that I used uh, to test the um, the, that, the date of the elements. So now I don't need that. I just need to leave that here. Okay, so every time this is going to be uh, rebuilt. Uh, actually, it's every, every time the state is initialized. I don't know if the state is initialized. is re-initialized uh, each time the... The widget is rebuilt, but that's uh, that's okay if I have to hot reload. Uh, that's going to be okay. So now I need to uh, I need to do things. I need to uh, remove this uh, debug function. Do do do. Where am I? Uh, am I? I'm in the home screen. That's not where I want to be. I want to be in the expense form. And when I 
click here if everything is okay. Actually, I haven't seen that. The snack bar. Did it show? I don't think it did. I don't think it showed. Uh, date is optional, so I could just leave. Oh yes, expense saved. Okay. Right. So, uh, before we pop, we need to save our expense. So, that's going to be something like... Um, something like... Uh, I will need to get same thing as the home screen. I need... An expense provider. Oopsie. Control C. I need an expense provider. Uh, when I uh, probably need that here. Final expenses provider. DI. That get. Okay, so that's going to be initialized automatically each time the state is constructed. And when I save that, I should be able to do. Expenses provider that save and I can just pass the expense, I guess. Let's go there and let's see. Um, I call that save. I'm going to call that create. So, create. Uh, so far, we don't need that to be an async call. So let's do that. But db equals await. Well, now we know. Now we know we need to have that as an async function. Await database helper dot database, and uh, that can be removed too. Okay. Uh, and now db.query uh, Is it query? No, it's probably db.insert. Yes. Uh, db.insert. Right, table. We need to insert that in the expenses table. And then values. What is values? Table map of string object values. String null column hack configure algorithm configure map of string ob string object okay this method helps insert a map of values into the specific table and returns the id of the last inserted row so our values equal h18 name value int id get await db insert okay that's always good to know so let's uh, do that and we're going to do that in the expense uh, once we're done, we're gonna want to um, it would work better if I had the argument. We're gonna want to expense that ID equals ID. Okay, and now we need to map our object, our expense object. So we need a let's create a function here. And um, where we are at it, we uh, have int id and then this dot id now when we create an empty expense id is null and when we are cloning an expense we don't clone its id so that's good now we need a, a function a map we need to map that to a uh, a map of string object string object so that's map of string object to map and we're going to return ah are we going to return something like that is that gonna work seems it seems to so uh, we don't want to map the ID, do we? No, we don't. Description. That's this description. 
That's actually almost the same thing as clone, but with um, double quotes. So let's do this. Okay. All right. I'm pretty sure there's a. Let's let's have a look. Let's ask our friend Google if there is a way to map flutter map object to map of string object. Let's see. How to map response to map string object in flutter. No, 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 no. Let's go to the response. As you have already known, you can that you cannot do something like this, but instead you need a custom domain from JSON. Yeah, not really what I want. Not really what I want. That convert map object to map to object convert map value of list that flutter map hash map tutorial. There's probably a way to do that, but I don't know. If somebody knows, let me know. I will happily do that. So we can do that right now. Did we miss something? So description was a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With a DID and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got everything. That's great. So now I can go here and say expense.toMap. Uh, that should insert that, then expense.id equals id. And since, uh, as far as I know, Flutter passes arguments as reference, that should update this object here. We're not going to use that anyway, but let's see. Okay, let's do a hot reload. Let's see, a hot restart, yes, okay. So now it's empty. Let's see if we can save our first expense. Milk for 10 francs for them. And the date is yesterday and the category is refund because I don't have anything else. Save. Oopsie. It didn't like that. Uh, invalid argument 20, 21, 0, 9, 20, 0, 0, 0, with type that time. Only num string and you didn't, you int, ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I see, I see. So we can only save basic types uh, in there. So our expense dot to map should change that and that can even be null so uh, how, how did I format that in the form I used a what did I use to format the date that is formatted using ooh, 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 I, it, what happened here yeah, I forgot uh, yeah I had forgotten a comma uh, it's date format that that format that okay so i need to guard against against nulls this date equals equals null then date is nothing else date is actually i think i can do that that and then that and then that uh, format this date Uh, what's wrong? Need to import that format. And now it says that it can't be null. Uh, yes, it can't be null because we forced it. Uh, and now... What it says, the left operand can't be null. That can't be null? It can be null. Okay. Oh, that's the null, uh, the null, null check. I probably, 
I prob I'm probably not doing that as it should be done because the, this operator here is probably not what I want. So let's do this like this and I will learn to do So this that that cannot be nil, so why are you still thinking it can be nil? That's weird. Okay, let's try again. Did it save it or is it just a fragment of my imagination? Oh it is a fragment of my imagination. Let's do that again. Two francs uh, for them, and I add a date, and I do age tests later on. Okay, another problem. Invalid, invalid document type false. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's only num strings and list of u u int eight. Okay. All right. Uh, fix that. We will fix that. Uh, this is a boolean. So let's transform that to uh, into an, an int. Like so. Uh, the same thing here. Like so. This is a string, so that's okay. This is a currency, that's okay. That's the double. Uh, what did it, did it say? Num. The num. Should a double should be okay? That's a string and that's a string. All right, let's uh, let's reload and see and see uh, if it's that works better. Milk two francs for them today. Save. Uh, table expenses has no column name description. That is entirely possible because my table creation code is really old. So let's go to database helper. All right. And we've got what? We've got, uh, how can I? Uh, yes, I need to split that and have the expense here. Okay, let's do that. So we have an ID. Mm, I need to learn something. Plotter, multi-line, string, and dot. Uh, triple quotes and then triple quotes. Okay. Or, tri or triple double quotes. Triple quotes, create table expenses. Oh, we can do that like that. Create table expenses. ID integer primary key. Okay. So subject doesn't exist anymore. That's description. Okay. It's a text paid by text. Amount is double. Currency is text. For me is bool. For them is bool. Uh, we need also to save category. That's text. For now, we also have date, which is going to be text, and but well, ID is already there. Uh, so that's it. Uh, one, two, three. There we go. We have our SQL, and we can create that. Uh, oh, thank you for the follow. Hello, Hagdir. How are you? Thank you for the follow. Uh, Roller Dev, I guess. <laughs> Let me know if I pronounce that correctly. And welcome to the stream. Uh, create table. So I need also to do that. Otherwise, it's not going to create the database again and I will have to uh, probably hot reload 
is it is it gonna work? Rest yes, deleting database deleted, so it probably recreated the database. And let's once again create an expense and try to save that. Milk for ah uh, keyboard for ten francs for them. Uh, and then today and then refund and then save oh -ho! well now I need to comment that out so that it won't delete and recreate the table again and restart my app and cross my fingers and it doesn't work because that doesn't exist anymore I should probably it's correct. Do you recommend Linux for Flutter? Uh, yes, but I am biased. I recommend Linux for everything. <laughs> uh, yes, I do recommend uh, Linux for Flutter because it's so easy to install everything. Although, that being said, I have tested Flutter on Windows and it works uh, equally great. So. It's really a question of preference, uh, the OS you, you, you prefer. Um, I prefer Linux, so I use Linux. But if you prefer Windows, go for it. Uh, it's really, uh, really simple to install on both uh, platforms. So whatever is your preference, uh, go for it. So um, I think this needs to be a function that that needs to be a constructor that takes the map as an argument and we need to move everything that is related to building uh, an expense to the expense class so let's do exactly that uh, expense as uh, so i can close that and go to the expense thingy and now we need to create a constructor. So this constructor is gonna be is gonna be oops expense dot uh, dot uh, from map. Uh, that's gonna take a map of string object probably map. And it doesn't like that. Why? non deliberate instance field amount must be initialized. Yes, yes, we're coming to that. Don't worry. Uh, so we have description, which is going to be equals to map of description. But I can't do that. Ah, I knew it. The initial type object cannot be assigned to file string. Huh. Do I have to cast that? I guess. Yes. I have to do that. So, description. Paid by. Okay, so paid by is supposed to be a boolean, but we... No, paid by is a string, so that's okay. Equals map paid by as string. Uh, what else? So, description was... Mandatory, so that's mandatory too. The amount is also mandatory, so we can go right there. Amount equals map of amount. Come on, amount as double. Let's do that and complete the uh, thing. Currency is a required string, so let's. Have that too. Currency as string. Okay. Uh, for me and for them are two booleans, but they are stored as amount. But oh, thank you. Uh, for me and for them are two booleans stored as integers. So let's. Do that for me equals map for me equals equals one true otherwise false 
And then for them is the same because map of for them uh, equals equals one true false. And if you have a keen eye, you may have noticed that uh, we now have sparkles in our Visual Studio code, which is fun. It's totally useless, so absolutely, uh, you know, indispensable. <laughs> okay, the category is a string that can be null. So let's try and do category equals map of category as string. Uh, as string. Uh, that seemed to be working. Uh, or maybe, maybe not. Oh, yes. And then and then that. Which extension is that? Uh, one of the 1200 extensions I have in inside this. It's an extension called Power Mode. That's this one, Power Mode. And you need to uh, change a few things in config code user and uh, in settings I don't know if the uh, uh, let me edit that in code I hope it's going to open the correct one yes so you will need to add that to your uh, set uh, your settings for mode enabled true power mode enable shake false so if you want to uh, make a clip on twitch with that go ahead i will let that uh, on the screen for a few minutes so power mode enable uh, well it enables the uh, the thing enable shake false because by default each time you type the screen moves left and right and that's really uh, annoying after a while max explosions one uh, just to limit the number of explosion, explosion frequency four, uh, to also limit the number of of, uh, of explosions. Uh, background mode mask, which means uh, the color of the explosion will be the same as oh, it worked. Uh, the same as the uh, the context. I will show that later. And uh, selection clipboard has nothing to do with uh, <laughs> with with that. That's something something else entirely so for example if i'm here in expense and i type so the explosions are blue but if i'm in from map which is green and i type the explosions are green it's totally useless but really interesting and they are white see that's uh that's fun okay the dot now the dot can be null in the database. So you're welcome, Agdea. You are welcome. So let's see. That equals map of that equals equals uh, equals equals null. Then null. Else. Else. Uh, let's go and have a look at that and see how we passed the debt. Uh, how did we pass the debt last time? We didn't. We didn't. Text editing controller, text widget, expense date. So that was the we did that. Otherwise, we did that. On tap show picker. Ah, we didn't because we got the dat from the dat picker and it returned a that time already. Hmm. But now I need to convert string to that time. Well, I'm guessing try pass formatted string. Let's let's just do that and see what it gives us. So that's gonna be a string because we know it's not gonna be null. Now that should give us an expense from a map. And if we go to the database helper here, which is, I think, uh, we don't need that anymore. Which is, I think, uh, no, not the database helper. So where were, where were we when we crashed? Uh, we were... We were here. Expense provider. 
Yes. So we want to return from map, map. Uh, that and that. Yes. Yes. And... No, row. Not map, row. But row is a... Uh, no, row is an int. Maps of row. Maps of row. There we go. Do I know Blockman? Uh, no. What does Blockman does? Let's see. Blockman. Blockman. Mark highlights nested code blocks. For better experience, Blockman will change these six items in VS Code settings only one time at the installation event. You can change them again when you want. The six settings are very non-vital, so maybe you don't even need to back them up first. Uh, okay. I don't really like that it changes that, but I can change that back afterward. And what does that do? VS Code extensions for the seatbelt highlight. You can toggle, enable, disable, press F1 and then type blockman toggle. Also, you can go to Blockman settings and set blacklist of file format to disable Blockman for certain file. So before we had that. Ooh. Hmm. That looks interesting. Let's install that. Let's install Blockman. Okay. And see. Uh, oh, I guess. Oh, there we go. Not bad, not bad. I need to see if I like that, but it does help to see in which block we are. Thanks for su the suggestion. So where did it uh, change my my settings? I guess it changed that in, because there's no dot VS code in there, or maybe it's hidden. Uh, maybe maybe this thing <laughs> hides that. No, there's no dot VS code, so it changed that in my settings. Maybe. Um, yes, here it changed that. Okay, I can go back in there on. And change ah that's the editor line highlight background that's the uh, the color they change I think okay well thank you for the suggestion uh, it's always nice to have new toys I'll see if I keep that um so where were we uh, we were trying to load our expense from database so let's restart this application and there we have it milk me 10 francs that looks uh, like it worked let's add another one them they paid the coffee for two euros and they paid for me uh, let's not add any date or category for this one Coffee, then two euros, and I can edit that, and it seems to be okay. Let's restart the app. The app, and they are still here. Victory! We are saving our um, our uh, expenses in the database. Great, great. Now I want to see if we have the ID, and we probably don't. Because uh, in the expense thingy, the constructor from map doesn't initialize the ID. It should do that. It should do that because from map comes from the database and we know we will have the ID from there. So 
map ID as int. And now we should have the ID. And we can see that in expense form when we open the form. Uh, action on pressed no. What do I get? Where did I get the uh, the current one? About title on pressed. I don't even remember where where I got the expense from. So that that's there. That's there. Oh, that's uh, yeah, mother root. So now I can do that. Print id equals dollar sign curly brace uh, open curly brace expense dot id close curly brace semicolon. And now if I go there and I click on milk, it says id null, which is not what I expected, and it says id null which is also not what I expected. Did I reload the app? Maybe not. Maybe I didn't reload the app. Uh, let's go. No. Click on that. ID null. Not what I expected at all. Mm, so... So... Uh, so, get expense and value, set state expenses value. I don't think I can print value because value is a. Uh, instance of expense, instance of expense. Uh, Can we implement a two string in in Dart? Can we over, overwrite or implement two string? Overwrite two string. There we go. To do implement two string. Uh, return id equals id semicolon go and let's reload. ID 1, ID 2. But then when we arrive here, ID is null. So we have a problem. Oh! I know. I said that we didn't need the ID when we were cloning an expense, but it turns out we, we do need the ID. So let's go to clone and let's add this ID, this. And now, if we reload the app, ID1, ID2, and I click there, ID1, and I click there, ID2. Okay. So that works. Uh, we leave this two string here, uh, even though it's not very helpful right now. Uh, if we go to our expense form, we now have the ID. So when we save this, when we save this uh, in this thing here, we need to create only if we were in creation mode. So we're going to need to do something about that. Let's see. Uh, the creation mode equals expense expense that paid by equals equals nothing and then that's underscore creation mode because it's a private variable so we can use that here if creation mode then create expense else edit expense and then when we save that if creation mode uh, 
Uh, what? Oh, if creation mode. Uh, that else expenses provider dot update expense. Okay. Hmm. Can I make a save or update function? So we I only have one. And if expense doesn't doesn't have an ID, then I do the update. That would be that would be create or update. Update expense and then go to expense provider. Modify this function. Expense provider. Expense provider. That's create or update. And we insert and if we don't have any an ID. So if the expense expense that ID equals equals null. Then we insert else and then we need to do that. Else if it already has an ID, then await db.update table value. Okay. But how will it know? Uh, string where? Ah, that's interesting. String where? List of object where args. Uh, as in, colon id equals un dollar colon id equals question mark works to do dot id, which is pretty much what we want. So let's copy that. Uh, go back here. We're going to update so that's expense.toMap where I think I have where here snippet gift alt plus up or down arrow to move current yes yes uh I think you've told me that already but uh it's not in inside of me right now <laughs> where uh so where uh, ID, I think it's how we. I think it's uh, how we created the, the column. Yes, ID. Dollar ID equals where args, and that's uh, expense point dot ID. Okay. And that is uh, one too many. That should do it. What's wrong? Uh, that is wrong. And then it says, undefined name ID. Try correcting the name to one that is defined or defining the name. Oh, yeah, okay. So if I do single quote, does that change anything or? No, that it doesn't. That's, so that's ID equals, and I'm going to put that in double quotes because I'm used to double quotes. And there we go. Await oh, db.update expenses expense to map where ID equals uh, um, question mark and then expense.id. Okay. Maybe, maybe that is going to work. So let's uh, refresh our application and say that it's no longer milk, it's. Uh, uh, I hate this keyboard. It's uh, low fat milk. Okay, let's save that. It says low fat meat, low fat milk. Reload the app, low fat milk. It did update. It worked. Uh, so Oh, yes. Oh, paid by me now. Save that. Reload the app. Uh, that has been paid by me. Okay. Create and update work. 
uh, create update delete how do I delete something from there let's have a look at uh, the contact app do we have contacts no we don't so let's create one Let's create one. One number is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's not exactly that, but yes, okay. Mobile, that's okay. Me at at somewhere.com. Uh, that's my home address. Yes, save. Okay. So if we go back to the list. Apparently, there's a menu here, and we can delete from here. Hmm. Do I want to do that? I already have a cross here and a save here. I would rather have a menu here to delete from here. Or do I? Hmm. What do I want to swipe? Swap? Swipe? I don't know. Side of the line, yeah. That would be my guess too, because uh, because you have the list here and you can remove the items from the list from here directly. Uh, okay, okay, we need to ask our friend Google how to do that. Um, Flutter, add, how, how is, it, is this menu called? Three dot menu at end of line. Easiest way to add three dot pop up menu app bar in Flutter. And the answer is. Uh, what? Pop-up menu button. The pop-up menu button. Letter. Pop-up menu button. Uh, pop-up menu button. This is the menu when press call on select. Uh, a screenshot or a demo would have been appreciated mm, but uh, example tutorial oh I have seen a video so I'm going to mute that to avoid copyright infringements but let's have a look what are they doing? Come on, show us some some stuff. No? That's the interesting part. Or long press. Swipe or long press. Hmm. That's yeah, that's that's what I wanted to do. I wanted this thing here at the end of my line. But it seems to be really complex. Uh, pop up menu button needs some pop up menu builder. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Flutter, swipe uh, left to show delete button. Implement swipe to dismiss. Do we have a sample here? Let's run that and see if that's something we want. Uh, I guess it's exactly what I want. It is exactly what I want. Although I might want a, a confirmation, but yeah. Long press. Huh, I, I don't. 
Yeah. Is it something that we would do naturally? Long press? I think it's uh, it's more natural to swipe than to uh than to um long press i i think i might be wrong but so how do we do that uh we have that i have that i have a list view builder i do have that item builder i do have that final item index return dismissible ah dismissible dismissible wrap each item in a dismissible widget in these steps give users the ability to swipe an item off the list by using the dismissible widget after the user has swiped away the item remove the item from the list and display a snack bar in real app you might need to perform more complex logic such, such as removing the list from a web service or database yes exactly so now we add that and the child is the list tile so we need to wrap the list tile into a dismissible we have well i have learned something so uh i'm glad i now uh can return oh so i had a card and the child of the card was the list tile so do i make the dismissible a child of card do i wrap the list tile in the dismissible or the card my guess is the list tile, but I might be wrong. Let's try. It's the only way to know. Okay, so it's a dismissible. And the dismissible says... Uh, what does it say? The name key is required, but there's no corresponding argument. Okay, what is the key? Key, key the item. Each dismissible must contain a key. Keys allowed Flutter to uniquely identify widgets. Okay. Okay. Key of uh, item. I'm good with that, uh, which is not item actually. It's items of index, uh, which means expenses of index. Okay. And that still doesn't work because the argument expense cannot be assigned to the parameter string. Right, uh, so I'm going to give you the ID, and I'm going to to string. There we go. That should uniquely identify the thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep the blockman extension. I'm still, I'm still talking to myself. <laughs> Swipe to display just been like a confirmation. Yes, yes, that's what I was thinking. But then it's always the same thing. When you don't have the confirmation, you want the confirmation. And then when you have the confirmation and you want to remove like 10 items, then you wish you could do that without any confirmation. Ah, that's complicated, but we'll see. Uh, so now we have the dismissible. Uh, let's see what that gives us. Huh. Well, it did dismiss stuff. <laughs> it didn't uh, show the the red uh, red background, but I'm sure that's fixable. Uh, they are still there because I haven't... So it, when I do that, yeah, I like that. I like that. Let's see what else did they do. Our button in that bar to select multi-line to delete. Yes, that's... That's... Oh, you mean kind of like what I've seen... I've seen that in the settings app. So let's go back here. In the settings app, when I went to uh, here, here, and then here, and then when I, when you remove, then you have that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I could do that. I could, well... That's gonna need a little bit of uh, 
of searching. So I'm not gonna do that now, but I I I keep this uh, option. Oh, nude is not a substru sub type of string. Weird. Uh, weird. Maybe it. Uh, oh, I pressed uh, stop. Maybe it was desynced. Let's try that again. See if it crashes again or not. A new version of Flutter is available to update uh, Flutter upgrade. Hmm, okay. We shall do that. We shall do that. Let's see. Come on, come on. You can do it. I know you can. Flutter 2.5, don't know. Uh, we'll see. We will see. Okay, so it's not crashing anymore. Uh, let's see what uh, Flutter version. I am using 2.5.0. I am using 2.5.0. So let's uh, let's do stop. Exit that. Run a terminal. Uh, I don't even need to be there, but Flutter upgrade. Ah, so you do. Your Flutter checkout is local changes. What? The Flutter checkout is local changes that would make that would be erased by upgrading. If you want to keep these changes, it is recommended. Stash them with git stash. I don't know what you're talking about. We'll do that later then. I don't want to do that right now. Uh, okay. Um, let's go back to here. Uh, on dismissed direction, state state items dot remove at index. Mm, so why is it not red? Why is it not red? Filter data source, okay. List view builder, item count, item builder, return list title. Yes. Ah, provide leave behind indicator. As it stands, the app allows users to swipe item off the list but doesn't give a visual indication of what happens when they do. To provide a cue that items are removed, display a leave behind indicator as they swipe the item off the screen. In this case, the indicator is a red background. So that's the background of, of what? Ah, the background of this dismissible, okay. So let's go back to the dismissible. What? Do, 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 do in the uh, home screen. And the dismissible is there. I probably forgot a couple of commas somewhere. Like here and here. Okay, this visible is here, and we need to add a background. Uh, it's a widget, okay, and so the background is a container. Oh, that's where I can add the trash icon. And now I'm sure I am. I want to see what's that. What's the secondary secondary background? It's also a widget. Let's make that blue. Shall we? Blue. And see where that appears. Uh, press the 5 to rerun the app. Fail to run. Oh, config change, but... Ooh... I I did 
I broke something. I broke something. Hmm. I did break something. Android SDK manager not found. What did I do? Ouch. That's not good. Error command. Snap bin go off. Fail to run snap bin go off. The config change may not be applied correctly. Sudo. Sudo. Snap. Refresh. Go. Is it go or go long? Go as no updates. Hmm. Okay. So let's do something. Let's do this. Let's invoke the Kraken. And commit and push our changes. And then we'll upgrade Flutter and see if that works better. Because I broke something and I don't know what. Okay, we're going to expense 42. And we're going to stage everything and summary commit before Flutter upgrade. Commit. Enter your PGP key. Password. I should do that. Um, duke, 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 submit. Okay, and push to GitHub. Okay, close the Kraken, close Visual Studio. Sudo Flutter upgrade. Your Flutter checkout has local changes. What does that mean? Type Flutter. User local bin Flutter is ATC alternatives Flutter. Which is opt Flutter. Oh, I didn't install that by hand. CD opt Flutter. What did I change in there? Flex the dart. Wow. Git diff flex the dart. Uh, uh huh. Git check out dash dash. Uh, uh, not what I wanted to do. Git status. Git check out dash dash. That. Okay. You do Flutter upgrade. Okay. It's doing its thing. Oh no, I do need uh, sudo, I believe. Come on. Oh, 17% only. Oh, it's a big update. All right, let's uh, have a look at the code while it's doing that. Uh, we can't run it, right? Can we? Uh, no, we can't. We should probably shouldn't do that. All right, um, well... It's been an hour and 20 minutes. I'm thinking that this might be a good time to end this stream. Uh, I have made good progress. Uh, I'm happy with where I am. Uh, it's the message display online 2 after launching Flutter Grid command. Oh, okay. So you mean it does say we should not run that. We strongly recommend running Flutter tool without super user privilege. Yes, but it's installed in a place where it needs oh no 
You're right. You are right. You're absolutely right. So let's stop that. And upgrade Flutter. Try to retrieve package. Down. So we do RM this. Uh, impossible. I cannot. Uh, because somewhere. Ooh. Oh. I'm glad I didn't add the RM dot dash rf so in bin and then cache and then dot sdk linux tip dot sdk uh, sudo um, what was that? this thing okay so flutter upgrade now works well, it's always a pleasure to have you in this in the chat. I have learned something about that um, extension, so uh, I'm going to have a look at that. Uh, as I was saying, I made good progress. I am happy with where the app is. I might do some off-stream uh, stuff, like uh, looking for this uh, this this menu that toggles the uh, the checkboxes to remove stuff. But I like the the idea of the swipe. Uh, so to did it. Uh, so I'm going to investigate that also. Um, and well, I will probably, well, I will be back tomorrow night on this channel for the recording of Maker's Corner, my DIY uh, podcast with my friend Nate. Uh, so that's going to be a different kind of stream on this channel. And I probably be back. I will probably be back either after the recording of Maker's Corner. Um, tomorrow or uh, Friday uh, for another go at uh, this app in Flutter. So thank you everyone who uh, watched live. Thank you everyone who's watching after the fact either, either on Twitch or on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to follow. I am trying to get to affiliate. So the more uh, followers I've got, uh, the happier I am. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Good night, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.